This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video we're going over static manual release of the pectoralis minor. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're watching it for educational purposes, and that you are a licensed manual therapist. That is, you are legally allowed to perform manual techniques based on your scope of practice. Generally, that includes physical therapists, athletic trainers, chiropractors, massage therapists, osteopaths. I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple, but if you're unsure of whether you're allowed to do this technique, please look those laws up in your state or region. Personal trainers, this technique probably does not apply to your scope, but you could use the palpation portion of this video in an educational setting to help you learn your anatomy. I'm gonna have my friend Crystal come out. She's gonna help me demonstrate this technique. Now as this technique is on the pectoralis minor, which is in a fairly sensitive area, especially when working with females, we do want to be 80%, 90% sure that the release of the pectoralis minor is going to have an effect on our outcomes, whether those be rehab or performance related. And the only way I'm going to get there is by starting with assessment. So I would never have Crystal just lay down and start releasing her pectoralis minor. I might do overhead squat assessment, goniometry, manual muscle testing, muscle length tests, special tests. There have been assessments and tests before trying this technique that give me an indication that this is going to help me towards Crystal's goals, whether those be performance or rehab related. Now all of our manual techniques follow a very similar protocol, which is basically palpate and compress. We do want to be able to palpate and differentiate. So in the case of the pectoralis minor, we do want to make sure that we know the difference between where the pectoralis minor is, which is underneath the pec major, right? And not just be compressing down on pectoralis major fibers, which if we're trying to affect scapular mobility, let's say, working on pec major isn't going to help. Pec minor will. All right, so we got to be a little bit more specific than that. We do get some bonus points for knowing where the trigger points are, which in this case is in the middle of the pectoralis minor fibers, but I think you guys are going to find a little bit like when we did the subscapularis video. It's not so easy to just put an X on that particular point. It's going to be, those trigger points are going to be right between the coracoid process and ribs 3, 4, and 5. The one thing we do have to consider before I start digging underneath her pectoralis major is do we have other potential structures that could be insulted or injured by compression. And right underneath my pectoralis minor runs my brachial plexus, my axillary artery, and of course since I'm messing around in the axillary region, we do have to think about those lymph nodes as well. So guys, if you're pressing through that tissue and they, so the, uh, your patient or client complains of numbness, tingling, pain, especially that searing burning pain that comes along with stretching a nerve. We're going to go ahead and back off a little bit, try to move our thumbs or our fingers around in such a way that we can get around that structure. Remember, nerves are very, very thin. We're talking like a millimeter. So it should be fairly easy to get around that tissue. And of course, last, we want to think about patient comfort and our comfort. So we want to get body position where we are not going to wear ourselves out and our patient is still comfortable. Now I'm going to throw my comfort out the window for you guys for just a second here so that I can show you where you're going to be placing your hands. Notice that I very casually but very meaningfully took this hand and put it behind Crystal's head. It's actually a really, really convenient position to do pec pectoralis minor release in because that will posteriorly tip and upwardly rotate my scapula, which then lengthens out my pectoralis minor, and it gets her arm out of the way of her axilla. So all of that, nice, easy position. This is a nice, comfortable position for her, and now it's easy for me to get in there with my hands. Your pectoralis minor is underneath your pectoralis major. The way I would go about identifying this, guys, is you see this tissue here is her anterior delt, which then kind of folds into her pec major. So if I just follow that anterior delt down, 
and reach just underneath pec major here and I very gently start trying to course my fingers deeper and deeper underneath that pec major. What I will run into is while my pec major fibers run this way, my pec minor fibers run this way. So instead of having all of these horizontally oriented fibers that I'm kind of pushing into, all of a sudden I'll run into this very distinct lateral border on the upper lateral portion of her pectoral region. Once I find those tissues, I can press in just a little bit deeper so that I know I am affecting the fibers of pectoralis minor inserting into ribs three, four, and five. The ones inserting into ribs three just being a little bit more medial, four a little lateral to that, five lateral to that. I push a little deeper, I can, I can definitely affect all of those tissues. And then I can come in here and find the most tender point, superior to inferior, inferior to superior, within those laterally or vertically oriented fibers. Now, of course, I wouldn't do that reaching cross body this way. That's actually a fairly inconvenient way to do this technique. It's not easy for me. Obviously, I don't get much of a, a visual reference here. I'm having to kind of feel around with my hands. The way I would actually do this for my body position is once again have Crystal's hand up this way. I'm going to take this hand, the one closest to her head, I'm going to put my hand over the top of her anterior delt, and I'm just going to use this thumb to slide right underneath her pec major. All right, and then once I get deep enough, find that vertical border. I can go superior to inferior, inferior to superior. Make sure with these fibers, guys, you're taking short strokes. I wouldn't start at her anterior delt and then keep dragging skin with me all the way to rib five. If I start up high, I wanna lift up my finger and then try a spot a little lower, lift up my finger, try a spot a little lower, lift up my finger, try a spot a little lower, until I find that most tender point or that point of highest tissue density once I'm there and I found it, I can then use my other thumb if I need to, right, to add a little bit more pressure. So this is one position. The other position that it also gets used is I can have Crystal lay on her side facing away from me. I can lower the table a little bit. I can go ahead and place her arm up again like this. And now I can go down towards the table to affect these tissues. Once again, I'm still gonna start with my hand up here on her anterior delt. Just reach my thumb underneath her pec major, and then I can come this way. I don't use this technique as often. It's not as convenient for me, but it does occasionally come in handy, especially in individuals who are a little bit more well endowed uh, especially women who are more well endowed, this will allow the, the breast tissue to fall towards the table so that you don't feel like you have to have your hands in sensitive areas. So once again, guys, just to review, go ahead and lay back on your back for me. We're gonna go ahead and take Crystal's hand up, put it behind her head. That's gonna upwardly rotate and posteriorly tip my scapula. Now I'm going to start with just below my anterior delt here as it runs into my pec major. I'm gonna reach under those fibers, closer to the table that is. Right. Feel those ribs against your fingers. Right. Once I find that lateral border, I can then search that lateral border for the most tender tissue. Once I find that most tender tissue, I can then apply pressure thumb over thumb. Hold for 30 to 120 seconds, wait for a release, for that tissue to melt underneath my fingers and reassess. And now for the close up recap, the first thing I'm gonna have Crystal do is go ahead and take her hands and put them behind her head. This will automatically put her scapula in a position of posterior tipping and upward rotation, which is gonna lengthen out those pectoralis fibers for me a little bit. It's also gonna give me access to her axilla so that I can get behind her pec major 
and get to that lateral border of her pectoralis minor. If I take my hand and I just kind of put it over her anterior delt, my thumb will be in good position to just go ahead and reach underneath that pec major, right? These fibers right here. And I'm just gonna go right over ribs three, four, and five. Right, so I can feel her ribs right there. Kind of search through this tissue. Make sure that you're taking small, small strokes here as you're investigating to find, as you're palpating. You never want to take large strokes in this area. You never want to start somewhere far from where you want to be and start pulling a lot of skin tissue with you because you will make somebody very uncomfortable. But as I take these short strokes, find the lateral border of the pectoralis minor. There it is. We can see Crystal's face change just a little bit as soon as I find her pec minor, which is definitely a little overactive. And then I'm gonna look for the tightest point. All right. Once again, short strokes. Notice I picked up my finger there, and there we go. There's a nice tight nodule. It is a little hard to get thumb over thumb in this position. This position doesn't really allow us to get like a braced technique like this, at least not without getting our hands into places they probably shouldn't be. Right, but for this particular technique, having, having the ability to brace the anterior delt makes this technique not too rough on the hands. Now, the other way we could do this is I'm gonna go ahead and have Crystal turn on her side. And when she turns on her side, I can now use both hands this way and go right underneath her pec major and I can go ahead and palpate that lateral border once again picking up my fingers as I need to. I can straighten out my arms and again wait for that release for 30 to 120 seconds. Be very careful with this one guys. Remember that regardless of which hand position or which body position you use, you do have all of the nerves coming out from underneath the pectoralis minor, coming off that brachial plexus. You have that axillary artery. We don't want to impinge and stretch those tissues out because we'll definitely feel uncomfortable. Between the two positions, I find it easier to do the one on the back. However, this position is nice to have handy in case you do have a female with a lot of breast tissue. A nice caveat to this particular technique is as soon as you roll them onto their side, that breast tissue falls away from where you're gonna need to put your hands to begin with. There you guys have it, static manual release of the pectoralis minor. Please make sure that before you're putting your hands on somebody, you're 80, 90, 80 to 90% sure that that intervention is going to affect your outcomes. The only way to get there is through assessment. So before you start doing a pectoralis minor release, things like your overhead squat assessment, goniometry, uh, muscle length tests, even some special tests should be indicating that this particular technique is going to improve range of motion or reduce pain or maybe increase activity of antagonists. If you can, find colleagues that you can practice this on before trying this technique on a patient that will get you through a lot of the portion of this technique or learning of this technique that makes you feel clumsy. You want to be confident when you actually apply this technique in practice. And if you can find a mentor or a live workshop to attend so you can get some hands-on education, of course, there is no replacement. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you'll leave your questions in the comments boxes below. I'll be happy to answer. I look forward to talking to you guys again soon.